Nerd Soul. Lay ill kid at one youngster holding it down, bring that street geek and nerd soul. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Let's go because we talking about Star Wars. And I'm not gonna waste no time. We we look, we got cool people up in here. Solar is on the way, and right now we have the writer and director extraordinaire Jay Shearer. What's up? Oh, uh, it's good to be here. It's good to be avoiding the presidential debate and talking Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right so we have episode what is it five um called night last episode was day i figured this episode would be called night um after you watched episode five known as night how are you feeling about this episode i really enjoyed this episode because it was basically focused around what this show has been has done well and mm -hmm. for me it, yeah, it still has some of the same problems that the other episodes have, and I'm sure we'll yeah. talk about those. But but this is like, you know what? If you came to me and you said, um, well, let me say it, let me say it this way, because because Koi, I'm going to pronounce this guy's name wrong. Koi Jendao, I think is is how you pronounce it. I could be wrong. Shout out to Koi. He was on the Real Rejects podcast, and he said something that described perfectly for me. Um, how this show uh, is has been working and and what episode five was, and he said the way he I'm gonna, I'm going to reword it, but let me see what he said first, then I'll tell you how I reworded it in my own mind. What he said first was, episode five was really good, but not because of any of the episodes that came before it. <laughs> episode <laughs> five was really good because of what we know about Star Wars and what and like and going back into our history of the original trilogy. And even the sequel and prequel trilogies and all the other Star Wars that we've received, like that's what made episode five good, not because episode one through four particularly set it up well. Okay. Um, my rewording of that statement is that I think that episode five is an amazing fan film separate from whatever other episodes we get um, from the Acolyte. So it has some of the same problems, but at the same time, I mean, some of the action in this, I, I was like, hey, this is legit cool. Like, I really enjoy this. So uh, for me, it was not a turning point per se, because mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that it's going to set up future things that are awesome. But I really enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, basically, an awesome action sequence. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now we have Solar in the house. Solar Gracie, what's up? Hey everybody, this is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Source. We're coming at you from the Wizard's Tower. And I okay. love how you stated that. There, there's, yeah, th this episode did come off like a really fun fan film. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, alright, well, I'll, I'll throw it to you, Solar. Since you said it came off like a really fun fan film, how are you, how are you feeling once when the episode ended? When everything was said and done, are you are you you know more positive on this episode? Negative? How you feeling? Honestly, I think this was a better episode. Um, I don't know if it was because it felt like it, it felt calculated. Okay. Um, when people see Star Wars, they think a lot of things, but when they see Jedi. They want to be like, I want to see the room, room of the of the lightsabers, and the previous episode ended with, you know, they're gonna be a fight, right? <laughs> and uh, this one opened up with, m m remember last week when I said there was gonna be a fight? Yeah, have a seat. <laughs> and uh, there was a fight. There was a whole bunch of fight. But if you want to know how I really felt, felt like deep, deep, deep feelings on this episode when it ended, um, I had two major feelings. One, the person I think should have been the star of the show got killed off. That was messed up. And second, okay, where are they going now? Where, where are they going? Because they killed a lot of people in this episode. <laughs> you know yeah because um yeah true. it was very true yeah i was just like sitting up going huh that was all right because i'm not gonna lie um was it last week or week before <laughs> when we were saying they need to figure out something to do with um 
Um, with Yord. Yeah, with Yord. I was trying to think of a cute nickname, and I'm like, do I call him like Massage Monger or something? Because he ain't Killmonger. Oh. But you know, <laughs> just just trying to figure out Massage some kind of name, like Monger. <laughs> yeah, you know, something like, like that. <laughs> um, like but yeah, I'm like, oh, well, he's gone. And I had a moment of like, no, not Jackie, you know, Um, because she turned out to honestly win the win the poll for my favorite character in this show. And um, yeah, I mean, really, she was. I would have been really happy. And I mean that I would have been really happy if she had been the main character. If this show was about her, I think it would have been a better show. Um, But that's neither here nor there yeah when the show see, ended i was like, dunk. so you're an idiot like real idiot and i've got this thing where when people go no you should know this and i'm like dude they have the perspective of the character we have the perspective of the audience they don't know what i know because they don't get to see all the scenes that they're not in True. but on this one i'm like she doesn't walk the same. She don't talk the same. She's not having any emotional weirdness about everything going on, including the death of two of her old friends, which you saw her react to before you got knocked out. Hmm. And you don't know that ain't her? Okay. Like, for real? We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll say where I, where I stand at this episode with as when it finished, when the, when the episode finally finished, um, I'll, I'll say this. I think this episode should have been episode three. Mm. I think, yeah, I think this episode should have been episode three. If instead this of the episode, flashback, yes, instead of the flashback. If this was episode three, instead of flashback, I think people would be a little more maybe excited about this show. Maybe excited is not the term, but they'd be a little more forgiving about the show. I don't I, know if maybe forgiving is not the word. Maybe I'm not finding the right word, but I think this episode came a little too late, but I do like it. There are things that I don't like about it, but... For the most part, this episode was entertaining and we stayed moving. We had two fights going on. Well, we kind of had three fights going on and we kept moving forward and we we walked and talked at the same time. You know, we, we <laughs> like, you know, we have a story. <laughs> we have, you know, we have the, the Sith, you know, dropping clues. We know there's something going on between him and soul. And, you know, soul is apparently hiding something. And we we know there's some you know some hate by, back there behind both of them, because even Yord when he saw him he recognized him he knew who he was, so this is you know this is good these are these are kind of the break the kind of break harms I like, but uh, the ending wasn't my favorite. Mm-hmm. It. The, mm, I'll, I'll I'll say that for later, but I do I do think this episode, if it was episode three, this series would be received a little bit better. Um, because I did like the fight scene. I think that Soul is a little hmm. I think you know what? I'll I'll start on this. We'll I'll get into Soul right now. This is how I feel about Soul. Soul is too Maybe I'll throw this to I'll throw this to you, Jay. Is Soul too reserved for this mission? Maybe reserved's not the maybe reserved isn't the word. Too uh indecisive? Maybe it doesn't well, let me put it this way. Um we could break this down, and I hadn't really thought of this before, but he doesn't really feel like he's leading a team of Jedi. You know, like when you think of like Jedi leadership, you think of Yoda, you think of Qui-Gon, you think mm-hmm. of people who are in a state where even if what 
what's going on around them is chaotic, they are bringing a peace of mind and a peace of presence to the scenario. Um, and Soul is definitely not doing that. And he hasn't been doing that since he left Coruscant because even when he was in Coruscant, there was a sense of like anxiety around him that was un Jedi like, right? There's even a sense of, uh, of that with Vernestra because when they, when the two of them talk to each other, it does sound like they're in over their heads, which is a weird place for us to see Jedi leadership be. Even especially, I mean, yeah, Jedi leadership, especially them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like even when you see like Mace Windu, right? Like the guy, the guy never shows up to a fight, or it never shows up to something being like, "I lack confidence." They might, they might yeah. say something like, "Oh, there's still like a degree of shadiness going on that we don't understand, and the dark side like hides some of what we're." what we hope to uh to see but you still have a sense that they have confidence in what they are doing and and i would say that soul's lack of confidence is like very apparent in all the people that are working under him like none of them seem ready to, to face a sith at all even a little bit you know not even close even i mean it's kind of like what is all that training for Right. Except Jackie, Jackie comes through in this episode. Yes, like I even said out loud, I was like, "Go, Jackie!" I like what you're doing. I was like, "Cause <laughs> look, the girl, the girl won't scare." Sith came up, even when her when her lightsaber went out, which I think is cool. I want to talk about that too. She pulled the other lightsaber, like, "Yeah, baby, <laughs> the fight ain't over yet." Like, I, like, look, well, I love that. I picked that up. Yeah. <laughs> I love that energy. She was like, fight ain't over yet. But with Soul, it just, it seemed like every statement that the Sith made, it was like, it was, I don't know, it was shaking his confidence or something, or he was weak in the knees. I mean, did you see that, Solar? Or was it, did it just seem like that to me? Actually, I did. I, I actually saw that. Um, our little Sith friend was using some um, some tricks he learned from his dance troupe in Jacksonville, where the fight that he was having was mostly psychological. You know, because that's kind of the Sith way. Like, you get the cool choreography, but the whole time they're just poking at your brain. You know, yeah. um, from the Magneto helmet moment um, to all of the crap talking. Like, yeah, no, you know who I am. Like, what, what, you know? Um, with his fighting style, I really dug it. And we finally got a purpose um, for Mr. Killmonger here saying, yeah, his style is undisciplined and unformed. And, it's, and I'm like, okay, you're finally giving us differences between the Jedi and the Sith. Now I'm down, you know? And, um... As far as his dialogue goes, though, yeah, this was a great example of we've got to make him say something. So write a line real quick. You know, we've got to make him say something. Yeah, seriously, because if he had just been standing there silently, we'd have another Darth Maul. Hmm. And the okay, last okay. thing that these guys want is for people to be like, is for people to see how derivative the stories are. Mm. You know? So, I I get where they were going on that front. But the dialogue that they gave him, including the little end poem, I'm like, yeah, we don't know this character well enough to get this moment. You know? Yeah, and the... the Okay, so cool. Let's get into the Sith for a second. And a little bit, I'll say the Sith in the fight. Okay. Straight up, that helmet, and I guess it's Beskar or something, or maybe something else, whatever it was, it was cool. And the only, I guess the only Do you mean the that function were, or the design? Uh, I guess it's function, the way it was able to handle lightsabers. Okay. Like, okay. I guess it was Beskar or something, but I thought it was cool the way he he was ready. They weren't like when he turned off their lightsabers. They were like, "What?" Like <laughs> Jackie was the only one that was like, "So who cares?" Like so, the 
Jackie seems like the only one who came prepared to fight. So in this fight, like the why bring all these Jedi if they're not ready? Or maybe, well, I guess at the same time, they didn't know they were going to see it. Well, they might not have known about a Sith, but they knew it was someone who was able to kill a Jedi. Why were they so unprepared? Um, Complacency of power. You know what? Okay. G- good point. I'll throw this back to y'all. That, what you just said, lines up perfectly with uh, what the Sith said about, like, you know, I should be able to, can't remember exactly how the line went, but it was, like, pretty much, like, I should be able to have, use my power however I want to use it, kind of thing. And, you know, like, you know, similar to what the witches were saying when she said that this is about power and who's, who's allowed to wield it. So maybe that is a thing where like you said they, hey look we've stopped we've cut off everybody at the knees mm-hmm. so no one has the because fo- he says the freedom to wield my power the way i like he said this is about freedom you know what i'm saying and you know i want to i want to do with my my power as i will and i want a pupil <laughs> and of course he said and i'm an acolyte aka roll the credits shout out to <laughs> anyway. oh he said the thing he said the thing <laughs> but oh uh, but yeah this like you say complacency do, is the problem with this show that or the problem that we that we've been experiencing with the jedi really their complacency because they've had it good for so long Maybe that's the, maybe that's the question I want to ask. But for for Jay, is is that kind of like maybe what we're experiencing? Um, well, I'll, I'll say two things. Oh, first of all, um, it, the the type of metal that that is is cortosis, and that's ah. why it has. So unlike Beskar, which can reflect or deflect um, a lightsaber, cortosis actually is. Um, is such high energy energy absorption that's why it's canceling their blades out and they keep having their blade be canceled out ah. be, which i didn't know about until uh i i had watched a couple of videos of people breaking it down ah. um, yeah which is cool i mean it, that's a legends thing it's been around in several it's been around the comics and the novels and um apparently they this is the first time we're seeing it on screen which is pretty dope so cool. um but yeah to answer your question um I guess, first of all, I really like that as a philosophical concept. Um, it's like if you're on top for so long that you kind of forget to you forget to do the things that got you to be on top. Yeah. Um, especially if you can't like you know reiterate that to all these generations that came after you, and they're just basically it's basically like the the king who the self-made king who then has like heirs upon heirs, and each one of those heirs like is just living into being fat and happy and doesn't actually ever get to the place where they're actually working to get what they achieve. Gotcha. Um, I think that's cool. And I, and I really like that philosophical approach to these characters and to the Jedi. I'm not sure the show earns that though. Like, I'm not sure that the show has pointed that out in such a way that has been. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like me putting that on the show. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like so, because I think that, that Solar's comment like makes sense in the context of where everything is at. It just but they didn't it, tell it, us. Yeah, they didn't show it to us, right? Like, like, I guess like Andor. Like, let's just, let's just take Andor, right? Easily the best written Star Wars show, in my opinion. Um, Andor is the opposite. Andor is like, what if you're trying to wage war with a galactic empire that has all of the strength and is still hungry for more and you have to like all the things that you have to do and all the things that you have to be and all the compromises that you have to make to be able to um, fight against that galactic empire uh, like like everything is baked in to Andor in that way where it's like um, oh how do, how do we relate to each other like the, the rebels don't even trust one another because they all think they're going to get sold out to, to uh, someone's going to sell them out to the next person or betray mm-hmm. them or whatever so I think that for me I love that concept and I love putting that filter over the top of it 
the only thing I'm going to say is I'm not sure that the show has earned that. Yeah, um, the show hasn't done it depth. because Andor <laughs> right. made it known. Correct. Andor made it known up front, like, hey, even though we're kind of like rich and powerful people, sort of in our in our own cities or states or planets or whatever, yep. like we still have to be sneaky because like it's the empire and nobody wants to deal with the empire and nobody can survive the empire so we got to be like sneaky and cloak and dagger and go to the art art store and you know sneak money and how can i you know wire transfer this money without being seen all that kind of stuff yep here if we spent some time maybe okay like i said with the sense of urgency maybe if they didn't have the sense of urgency, but it was outlined by like, nobody can kill Jedi. Like that kind of idea. Like we like we have no threats. We mm. we you know, no one could tell if if we got that kind of I guess attitude or arrogance or whatever, then it would make sense later on, like, oh yeah, like that's why they have no skills. And I guess Jackie is the only one that really <laughs> really uh practiced outside of class because oh when jackie fought you could definitely she did the work at school and then went home and did extra work <laughs> you can Amazed. definitely tell she had a tutor on that front <laughs> like she stayed after everyone left she stayed in the gym for like an extra hour let's see i can't agree with you guys that the show hasn't set that up because it has if you know what it looks like Okay, in okay. the sense of every single scene on Coruscant dealing with um, Jedi Master Baldhead Renestra <laughs> um, really felt like a scene out of Demolition Man for me. Wow. Shelf the Demolition Man. You know, seriously, think <laughs> about it. Every time Saul was on Coruscant talking about what was going on, it's like, I'm sorry, John Spartan. But um, we have found the killer, and it looks exactly like your old pupil. You know, and everything that we... And all of the actions that we see of the Jedi are just like all the cops from Demolition Man when Phoenix first comes around. You know, they're like, yes, we are in charge. We are authority. We have had this power for so long that we've not been challenged for so long that we have no idea how to deal with someone who doesn't care that we're Jedi's, let alone someone who feels antagonized by Jedi. You know, everything has been like, who trained you? Who did this? But really it's been like, wait, you're not supposed to be able to do that. You know, <laughs> that that's really what I was getting from most of the fight scenes, you know, especially okay. Cause it, sick, I mean, I guess they did like it. Five or six of them. Okay. And um, and the Jedi are shocked. Like we weren't trained for this. You know, this guy's holding off five or six of us. Like we don't get our butts kicked like this. I mean, he was killing the the impaling and then pulling the other one into. That was that was nice. That was metal. that was a nice that touch. Was so, yeah. That was a nice touch. I, like even when I saw, I rewound that moment. Like, oh, that was nice. I mean, it's it's sad because you're a Jedi, but it's also nice. I got to give him props. <laughs> I, I got to give him the respect that he deserves. Um, but okay, I'll leave I'll leave them alone for a second. With with May and Osha finally seeing each other once again. Um, yeah, this is a moment that I just didn't really it. I didn't believe it. You can definitely tell that the interaction between them was in the script, and that's all. Because um, it, it, it didn't. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when they did the number one, okay, I was feeling May. Okay, I really was, especially after the last episode where she's like, "Nah, my sister's alive. I'm gonna make a change. My whole motivation for following the Sith Master is now gone." Because I know I'm not alone. I got family. I'll do my time. Um, and I'm cool. I'm going to go in and turn myself into the Wookiee. Right? All right. And then this episode happens. 
And again, I'm feeling her because, oh no, my master is here. I got a jet. And she, she spent the whole episode running. Like, she was the widget that they were all fighting over. And that really came out in the fight choreography. And I was cool with that. However, however, when Osha pulled the straight up road of having, um, having Mr. Seth pulled into the sky by the flying roly polies, which by the way was gangster. I got, I got to give that to her. I'm like, all right, all right. Yeah. You, that was some straight up street rat stuff. May kept running. At that point, she would have been like, okay, look, I messed up. Y you know what I mean? Yeah. Like she changed her whole motivation between episodes. Especially after we found out who the Sith guy was. And it's like, was she under his influence? Is she just a moron? I don't know. Is she just a moron? <laughs> Well, again, we saw in the fight scenes, Jackie saved her like six times. Yeah. You know, after their fight, as soon as the Sith guy came out saying, oh, nope, got to kill my student. Jackie was like, uh, uh, no, nah. I don't like her, but you ain't going to kill her. And yeah, if I wasn't going to kill her, she has to face Jedi her. justice. Yeah, exactly. Mondays at 8 p.m. No, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, as long as I, it's not a dick wolf show, I'll be all right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that's the it, thing that got me. The the interaction between them didn't seem heartfelt. And even though I understand Osha being like, look, you have to pay for your crimes, but it just didn't seem I don't know, it's tough. The the kids didn't seem to work for me. And the adult situations didn't seem to work for me. But I know they should. Yeah. And you know, the only thing is at the end of at the end of the episode uh may swaps with osha i don't know why i guess because she's like okay there's one more more one more person that has to die or maybe she's just like yo i gotta escape you know my master or whatever but i'm pretty sure the master's gonna be like oh you're not may like he's he's gonna know that it seems like immediately because he covered osha I guess maybe he thinks it's May. I don't think so because he covered her with like a jacket instead of just killing her. So um, I don't think he's unaware. I think he knows that's Osha. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure because he had said something in that episode like, oh, you know what? I think your sister would be a little better working for me because you messing up. Girl. Mm -hmm. And but with that, if we are to say that he noticed, if he noticed, that it was Osha. She didn't even say anything. She was just laying there. If he noticed that, then how does Soul not like? That's what I'm saying. Ah, uh, <laughs> maybe maybe it's because he's just trying to rush to get back on the ship. Maybe we can write it off on that. But I mean, then I have to kind of put it into the show. You know. Oh, also, uh, Jay, did you think it was weird that he just left the Jedi there? I mean, do we take bodies home or do we just let them? <laughs> yeah, no Jedi left behind. Uh, all the Jedi's left behind. Um, yeah, I mean, this is where this is where I say that it's still not it's still not overcoming any of the past issues that the episode has had. Here, here's 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 my bigger my bigger thing. I'm, I'm I'm I know I'm I'm avoiding your question a little bit here, um, but this is kind of a separate issue that I think is worth talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I think, how do I want to say this? The thing that I'm frustrated with is some of the dialogue about this show. Um, because we can, we can easily, what we're doing, I think what, I think what we always try and do when we break down star Wars is we try and be as fair as possible. And we yeah. try and say like, these things are really good and these things are really bad. Um, one of the things I find uh, a little bit frustrating, and this is not answering your question at all, it's totally going on a different tangent, but I just feel like we I need to say it is like there's these people out there that have these anti Disney Star Wars channels, accounts, oh, yeah. 
whatever, right? And every single time the show comes out, it's like all, there's all this stuff about how terrible the thing is, and they never do anything with when the show actually gets good. And then when the show is really good, like it's undeniably good, like Andor, they say something crazy like it's just too boring. And like at this point, I feel like we're at the point where we're like, we need more sensibility between people as <laughs> we are talking Star Wars. Um, I appreciate uh, John Campia because he's more sensible in that area. But I think that one of the things that you're doing a really good job of, um, Michael, is you're saying there are parts of this show that don't make sense because they don't track with what the show has or what the world of Star Wars has indicated to us yeah. would be previously true. And, um, and, 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 and of course there's the, there's the internal logic of the show itself, right? That, that's like not related to Star Wars, but like, cause like if you're going to have twins in Star Wars, um, we've seen that before Luke and Leia are twins. Um, yeah, we've seen it in visions. We've seen it in visions. Absolutely. And generally speaking, they handle twins in a certain kind of way. And there's, you know, there's a certain kind of like, uh, <laughs> like this, they're like, it's not always handled perfectly. Like when Luke and Leia kind of realize that they're twins and they kind of go like, I kind of knew that all along, but you're like, then why the hell were you making out with each other? Like, that's a problem, right? Like, yeah, that, that was like, uh, <laughs> okay, I guess we'll just, all right. Yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, but I think that there's, there's a good amount in this show that 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 you know souls just like we leave the bodies behind uh the there, there's like internal logic that's not quite being explained like so for example um uh i don't know what we're calling the sith guy yet chimera who's who he was by the way manny jacinto is doing a fantastic job in that role um Major even when the script out, i think yeah. is not great like he's doing phenomenal I think because you he doesn't that really so have anything to do. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, the thing I was going to say is that um, when he there's lines of dialogue in the show that literally make sense that literally make no sense within the context of the show. So when they're fighting him at first, they're like, "Take off the helmet so I can see who you are," and he's like, "No way, because you'll be able to read my thoughts." And then his helmet's off. Yeah, they don't read five the minutes thoughts. later. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. Or and then you maybe they expect... don't read the thoughts because they know him and now they know who it is. They, uh, maybe, but like, I don't know. But Soul should at least indicate that that's true. Like, he should say something like, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's you. <laughs> I don't know, something, right? Yeah, like, they, something to let us know. They give the look and they definitely notice him. Your makes a statement. I can't remember how the statement, but they make a statement basically that they notice him. But. I don't know if the who is he is okay maybe this is a good question mm. is the who is this guy important enough or or enticing enough to make you care about who he is mm, you mean as far really as the show question. is written yeah yeah not yet <laughs> yeah not yet um because when your comes out and he sees him and he's like you the only thing i got from it was didn't i bust you at the pawn shop that was it right that's what i got too oh yeah <laughs> that's, well, that's, that's well said that's exactly what i got so yeah it could be because i'm thinking maybe he's a another uh like a another uh padawan that kind of uh left or washed out or whatever and that's but you're right he could be like pawn shop guy <laughs> you know yeah. and um honestly it's too late in the run of this season to bring that up i thought that that was really poor decision like a really poor decision um yeah it's um i don't think that we care enough about this care we don't have enough of this character as far as the flat i mean we had a whole episode flashback to learn about ocean may which is cool they're the main characters we need to know a little bit i'm with it but we know nothing about the pawn shop set you know we, we don't also know, know if nothing about the show. supposed fire hmm? we also know nothing about the supposed fire yeah right, and what happened there yeah exactly you know um and you know you brought up the fire 
And that whole thing of the argument that was happening between May and Osha, dialogue that had to happen, but not the place or time, you know? Mm, okay. Um, that, in a better story, would have been an argument to happen in the holding cell. Like, they should have been having that conversation on the ship, mm. you know? where it was like no we're here and it was like no man you know you destroyed our home you did all this stuff i'm not letting you out of that cell yeah and even ashley even hmm, in a in a harder push on may to be evil you can capture may you can let the sith go he continues to kill more jedi and may can essentially sort of be your Hannibal Lecter for an episode or two to help you catch back up with the guy maybe and then you can share kind of moments between them where she's trying her maybe trying to get her to be serious instead of being so cold like look you're my sister how'd you change like this so I, I don't know huh? <laughs> and you know when they did the whole switch up like I was cool with the twin going, I'm going to pretend to be my sister to get on the ship. Because I'm like, all right, you know what? Do what you got to do to get a ride. But weren't you about to turn yourself in and get a ride anyway? Yeah. The biggest mm -hmm. thing I got was, mm -hmm. why did you change your mind? Like, there was nothing that really spurred the impetus for May to go back on the plan that she had at the beginning of the last episode that I could emotionally identify with. Not to say that it wasn't there. I just couldn't see it. Yeah. I, so that's that's the thing. Like we okay, I'll say this and maybe maybe Jay and you and Jay can both kind of agree with this. When we talk about Star Wars, we spend I hate to say this. We spend a lot of time essentially rewriting <laughs> like Damn, essentially somebody has rewriting to. the show yeah. <laughs> somebody has to because they definitely don't before they start filming <laughs> like, I, I don't know man there's there's a lot of moments that i think could be great emotionally like with yord with like i said you know about maybe playing them off like uh like they had a, a brother sister relationship and she had to kind of maybe now decide once once she's seen may kind of now decide between her you know her new sibling and her old sibling kind of thing you know but we, we don't get those things but we do get a cool fight scene jackie has two cool fight scenes then of course uh the sith he takes on like seven jedi and kills six of them like so i mean we get a cool fight scene or well, multiple fight scenes but then when it slows down to kind of make sense for us it's not working like even even when may it when, even when osha's trying to get your to turn around and come back maybe maybe something with more emotion than just like this is my order to get you safe like maybe because well see this is also going off the idea that maybe they had a a deeper relationship when they were younger maybe like i i can't lose you i thought you were gone something like that you know you're my best friend or whatever and you know so, something it's just like i got orders so i gotta do it. i carry my clipboard still <laughs> or when uh the Sith is about to kill one of the Jedi and Yord blocks it and stares at him. Maybe like a line from him, like, you know, something. Just because Yord had nothing, got nothing to do with got killed, man. Hmm. <laughs> They're like, show the abs for the ladies and that's it. <laughs> like, get out of here. You know what? I think that this, speaking of rewriting some of the show, you know what I think would have been I think two things would have been really galvanizing for this show that it does not currently have. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is that a lot of these shows seem like they're trying to do something new and different with Star Wars that we really haven't seen, at least on the live action side before. Some of it we've seen in the comics and some of the um, 
and some of the uh, novels. Um, mm-hmm. So, for example, Andor said we're really going to go after like an intense study of like what it would be like to be a, a realistic version of a rebel. Um, and okay, that works because they really pursued that and they they really dug into that and they said, in fact, we're going to exclude Jedi from this show because that's a distraction. Um, this show feels like it really should have gone into the neo noir like detective play and had it been all about the mystery and not at all about like some of the Jedi political stuff and some of that kind of uh, or the or even even the um, even the best part of the show which is the it was just the fight sequences and the and the coordination there fight coordination those are awesome but it really does detract from the thing the show was supposed to be was a mystery and it's yeah pretty bad at being a mystery right because it's getting distracted by all this other stuff um so i feel like that's one thing they should have done the second thing they should have done had they actually selected that as the as the course of action is i really feel like they should have made it a non-linear show so what i mean by that is maybe start out with like memento um or even um even oppenheimer did this a little bit but play with the timeline like there's two timelines running on the show at one time one of them is um uh may and osha's trying to figure each other out and trying to really understand what happened and trying to figure out if their family or if they're if their force families the sith or the jedi are actually their real families or if they're actually their real family and then the other timeline being who is this new Sith person and why have the Jedi, why are the Jedi so closed off and don't understand that the Sith, Sith person is, it, uh, exists. And then those two things playing against one another, but non-linearly, right? Okay. So we could jump around in the timeline. We could say like, we could see the fight here. Um, we could have seen the fight early on. Even early, I agree with you, Michael, that it should have came way earlier in the show. Episode three makes sense to me, but you could have, actually started out the show like that and then been like end the end episode one on you have twins that don't know why they're in their respective parties they're both going to the opposite sides of where they where 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 we assume that they started and then the jedi are going oh my gosh we just had six jedi seven jedi how many jedi die and there is some new force in the galaxy and then it starts to do starts to move forward but at the same time we start to see flashbacks of every of seeing information that kind of unravels and helps us as the audience kind of decipher what this story is but presenting it in the linear fashion in which it's done just feels like it doesn't capture any of the tonal elements that they're trying to capture so it's just weird so yeah i i am i am rewriting it but it's almost like i have to in my head to kind of want to, to, to be like a to give star wars a fair shake and to be a fan of it <laughs> so yeah so yeah How but i mean at least you, we're sir. not oh go How ahead go ahead dare you <laughs> what did you i straight do? up quoted me talking about every single tyler perry movie i have ever seen <laughs> you're just sitting oh, up boy. here going pick a tone Pick a tone. Are you a mystery? Are you a family drama? Like, pick something and stick to it. You can have some subtones. You can have a little spice, but you can't put the whole rack on every plate. I'm Man, sorry. You can you can have like a B plot, but you done got down to the G plot. Like, yeah, yeah. All right, dude, so they they got a whole elemental thing going, and I agree <laughs> with you. Um, and this isn't just me saying what I would prefer to watch or anything like that. Because as soon as I found out, like episode three, you know what episode three showed me? What? This could have been frozen in the Star Wars universe. It really could have Hmm. been. You got two sisters, one good, one presumably evil, a whole bunch of bad stuff happens. And we could have had a cool musical number with um, a sci-fi techno rendition of Let It Go sang by May and then a real bad guy like like Manny could have come out and then the sisters come together to stop him. I mean, that would have been that actually would have been a much better story. Mm. Um, Now, I'm not saying I don't like this show, by the way, because I love kung fu movies. And this show very much has a lot of flavor of kung fu movies I've seen in the past. I mentioned that last week. But 
what it's not given, like what it's where it's messing up on that kung fu movie uh, formula, is that kung fu movies have very straightforward plots. Like, not gonna lie, when I saw Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon in the theaters, I was a little confused by the ending. And when I saw House of Flying Daggers, I was a little confused about the climax. But you know what? The story was pretty straightforward. Yeah. And you, you know? know what? We could use the sword fight in, <laughs> in Crouching Tiger in Star Wars. We could use that in this show. Well, in truth, I mean, we're not getting it. Well, in but... truth, I'm not expecting that because that cost a lot of money. <laughs> and um, but they're spending like 22 million dollars an episode do you know how much it costs to run that soundstage you know, i guess i mean they're, they're spending a lot of the money on on the freaking walls that they're using but the fact of the matter is i'm all right with the fight scenes in fact the fight between jackie and manny was one of the better fight scenes I've seen from Star Wars in the past seven years. Mm. You know, it, was it really was. It was solid. I like, man, even the, you know, the moment before she died where she was like elbowing him in the face and stuff, I was yeah. like, I mean, I was like, Jackie is, man, look, we got to put her jersey up. Like, respect to her. Yeah. I mean, seriously, respect. I, I kind of, I put her up there with worthy, you know, not the best, but you know, solid. Solid there. <laughs> um, God, I'm old. Anyway, uh, <laughs> me too. Um, <laughs> I remember worthy. But, <laughs> but, Big game um, worthy, maybe. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, and the fight again, the fight choreography and the fight scenes. This really felt like the producers throwing the fans a bone. Like, all right, look, we've been showing nothing but Jedi and ugly robes for the whole show. Here's your lightsaber fight, okay? I know this is what y'all wanted, and we're gonna kick this lightsaber fight up a notch and. You know, I had to give shout outs to Ahsoka. Um, that kind of was the first place that I saw when I saw Ezra using Force Fu. I like Force Fu. You know, I, I really like it. And this show took that to the next level with May. I'm like, yeah, Force Fu, I'm all the way down, you know? Um, because you know, when when I was growing up, it was Jedi Lightsaber, that's it. And then episode one came out. And they started using a lot of the fight choreographers from Hong Kong and stuff. And I'm like, all right, but you're not going far enough. And I guess they read the letters in order that they're received because they finally read my letter and they're going a little far. <laughs> but the storytelling that they're doing um, with the dialogue, the scripts, the tones, um, the dialogue, um, the dialogue... Did I mention the dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, don't get me wrong, okay? Star Wars has never been Shakespearean, ever. Right. You know, I, I still, um, actually, while I'm thinking about it, yeah, Jay, I agree with you. We have a lot of people out there, which is what makes this particular show um, not, not, not the acolyte, but our review of this show so difficult for us so y'all better subscribe because we're actually reviewing the show and not going kathleen kennedy ruined my childhood and a lot of people criticize a lot of these star wars shows from that perspective that 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 predetermined oh boy. it's not it's not something that i can imagine myself at 10 years old doing so it's bad kind of perspective exactly um I yep I uh okay, here's my issue with the Kathleen Kennedy hate. Kathleen Kennedy made uh the um the sequel trilogy, right? So they're like Kathleen Kennedy, she's she's in charge, she's the one that did the sequel trilogy, everything she does sucks, she's horrible, mm -hmm. you know, get her out of here, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, Yeah, she was also in charge for Mandalorian. Nah, nah, <laughs> see, see, that was Dave Filoni. Whoa, 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 hold on. Now, come on now. Come on. I don't mind you saying she took an L. But if she has a W, you got to give her the W, too. 
You well, can't. Yeah, I mean, you can't these, just have all the L's. These arguments like, are made in bad faith from the beginning. It's the point yeah. Right. It's like I don't mind you saying you didn't like the sequels, and she's in charge, so she the buck stops there. Well, why didn't the buck stop with her? Now all of a sudden it's John Favreau and Dave Filoni. They, they they so now she's not in charge anymore. Now it's just all them. It's like yeah. come on, man. I, yeah. Again, these are these are a lot of bad faith arguments, and the toughest part about us talking about these shows is when we talk talk about the stuff that needs to be improved, we run the risk of those bad faith actors thinking that we are on their side for the same reasons. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so we're kind of- Because I've seen it in the comments. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, I don't hate Kathleen Kennedy. I don't, I don't love her or hate her. I, I think she's kind of middle of the road. She's around maybe 50%. 40 percent something like that she's you know i mean i've always said if kathleen kennedy came to me tomorrow and said i want to produce one of your movies i would be like that sounds amazing i would never be like oh what are you talking about get out of here i mean like i think i think kathleen kennedy's the unfortunate here's what i think is unfortunate right i think somewhere along the line lucasfilm and disney and kathleen kennedy they they took their eyes off the ball a little bit in regards to what it means to make star wars fans happy and i don't say that meaning like the the really annoying people that none of us really want to make happy because they're never going to yeah. be happy if there's like unless there's like a white male in his 40s in the movies right and unless you're re-releasing that. Unless you, unless you're re-releasing episode four, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Restore to four how it was over. in 1977. Yeah, they want they exactly. want the like the original laser disc release. So, like, come on, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the people I'm talking about are the people who have liked Star Wars for 40 years and just like just started liking Star Wars tomorrow. Like, there are consistencies with what we all like about Star Wars. Um, I think that Lucasfilm has taken its eye off of that being the intent and it has sort of it has sort of done this thing where it said star wars needs to adapt to being something newer and that's where it doesn't understand what newer okay. means in yeah. my mind like because like newer like you could be you could be newer in terms of saying we're going to update all the special effects. We're going to make it more inclusive. We're going to um, explore portions of the Star Wars universe that we've never seen before. All of those things are newer, but have nothing to do with changing the nature of what Star Wars is and what Star Wars means to people. Um, Star Wars means to people that there is hope and redemption in the galaxy. Star Wars means to people that there are there are good and evil and that although that may be occasionally nuanced, it's still easy for us to understand what is clearly evil and what is clearly good. Um, yeah. I think it's also about laser guns and, la and laser swords and you know what I mean? Like, and just fun stuff like that and relationships too, right? Like uh, it's really, it's still really weird to me that we do not have any, nothing approaching romance has come out of Disney yeah, Star we, Wars. We, you and I talked about it on one episode. I'm like, where are all these babies coming from? Like, come yeah. on. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, it's okay to have it's okay to have a family or like a budding romance that turns into a marriage or something like these these people these these species they're coming from something all right storks aren't dropping them off okay right so i got two things to say on that one we all survived the 90s and when i say that um when you were talking about making it new making it fresh you know the first thing that came to my head Poochie. You know, the dog that was inserted into Itchy and Scratchy on The Simpsons that was extreme, you know, <laughs> um, just like the 90s. And when they turned Huey, Dewey, and Louie from DuckTales to slacking teenagers, you know, um, the thing is, even though the newer DuckTales, I do like the art style, the comedy is hit or miss for me, but I do well, like the art style. Well, the big thing is, and what we're talking about here, is we're talking about um, the generation gap in film production, okay? 
um, it doesn't matter what the producers say that they're making. Okay. What it comes down to is they're trying to make something that they like, hoping that other people like it too. Matter of fact, it's not even hope. They take it as a given that mm. other people will like it. Mm. Now, with Star Wars, okay, Star Wars has always wrote this fine line between what's up fun and, of course, kid stuff. Mm -hmm. Because Lucas invented the merchandising model that has not changed since 1978. <laughs> okay, I'm serious. I'm, I'm just being real, you know. Um, but Lucas was trying to make his idea of Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon. You know, um, um, John Carpenter's The Thing was because he loved The Thing from Another World. That was a 1950s movie. So we got the people that are finally in power making the stuff that they wanted when they were young and advertising it to people who want what they wanted when they were young. And technology has a lot to do with it because that old model, the Spielberg, Cameron, you know, film school generation model worked pre-internet and pre-home theater because when we had to wait a year and a half before yeah. that thing that we loved in the movies came on TV and we got to see one without curse words, <laughs> you know, hippie by day, Ricky Martin. Um, we had time to marinate and to romanticize and we had distance from the stuff that we liked when we were kids. Mm -hmm. But when the home theater technology came up and I mean, one of my favorite reaction channels here on YouTube is literally, um, they literally released the reaction video to Furiosa. I'm like, isn't that still in theaters? You know, the turnaround is so quick that the people who have the money and the power and are producing things right now are making stuff from their childhood 20, 30 years ago, where the consumer childhood never ends. You know, so you got the Star Wars friends uh, like us and our boy Hannibal Taboo, <laughs> um, who've been riding hard for a lot of these franchises since the, the late 70s, early 80s. But we also had to deal with that wait period. We didn't have, wait a minute, isn't that just like this other movie from this other time? And we could click a few buttons and see a scene by scene breakdown and a scene by scene comparison to find out that we're right you know so the real star uh, i don't want to say real but the star wars fans in good faith out there that want to see something else i don't want to say something new because there's nothing new under the sun and that was written 2500 years ago um they want to see something other than the nostalgia of their parents and older siblings or they want to see something that's more to their nostalgic um leanings are in this weird spot because again it's people our age that are making this stuff and they're making it presumably for or presumably to sell it to everybody but they're making what they like um but there's also the bean counters we got to think about, you know, the executives in the office going, oh, yeah, by the way, you need to add this in for the Kansas demographic. And you got to add this in because when we go into syndication, we want to make sure that Pepsi um, will foot the bill a little bit. You know what I mean? Wow. The, you, the thing is, with the bean counters, you think with the data that we have today the bean counters would actually help us as fans. The bean counters would be like, oh, this comic book is really hitting. Let's make this either animated feature or make this live action show to help flesh that out. Or this novel from Star Wars is a hit because we're the bean counters and we have the data now. It's not and like in the 90s where it's like they, you and can if we see were things that are really hitting almost immediately. If we were in a world where 
hate watching didn't count oh yeah then those I being forgot. would do the thing but all they see are the numbers and not the motivations for the numbers you know what i i thought of something based on our last conversation that i want to bring up in relation to this exact point okay um and i never thought of this before until we were talking about how the show is being edited um we're and inspiring Solar- yeah, <laughs> yeah. Solar brought it up last week, and then I was like, I riffed off of it a little bit, and I realized, um, I read a book uh, about how apps are currently being made and how apps uh, are structured so that you will use them more by doing what are called like brain hacks. Yes. And um, Instagram is like one of the best examples of this, and I'll use Instagram as an example. Instagram figured out pretty quickly that if they showed you all of the best photos up front, you were actually more likely to click off the app and start using it. And that's because the way that the brain kind of functions is that you get a dopamine hit every single time you see a photo on Instagram. And if it's an awesome photo, you get a big dopamine hit. Well, guess what happens if they give you awesome photo, awesome photo, awesome photo, awesome photo, and it, 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 your brain starts to not give you as much of a dopamine hit every time you see the awesome photo. And so it starts to degrade over time. So what Instagram decided was they were going to make your feed be awesome photo and then a bunch of things that weren't getting as much attention that were not as awesome and wouldn't give you the dopamine hit and then give you something else that would give you a dopamine hit so that you would go, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And you keep scrolling. It's like gambling where you're constantly chasing the win. That's yeah. what basically Instagram is. And it occurred to me after we talked last week that that's kind of the way that Disney are editing their shows. <laughs> like they're kind of editing their shows where like every single one is not much of a dopamine hit. And and it's not like Andor where it's all well crafted to like actually be increasing dopamine hits. It's instead okay. uh, crafted as such to be like this part's pretty boring, but it doesn't matter because they'll they will hate watch and they will tune back in next time around. And the next time around, we're gonna give them the lightsaber battle, and that's okay. gonna be a huge dopamine hit. And it's gonna mean so, they're, gonna, they're gonna show up next week. My okay. heart is growing so many sizes that you can see that. Now I'm gonna dare you to expand your perspective on that. Yes, let's do it. I see it in regards to the editing. I see it in regards to the entire production schedule. Mm. Because you've mentioned Andor four times. Yeah. But you haven't mentioned Ahsoka, Boba Fett. (laughs) (laughs) Hell, we're here to talk about the Acolyte. And you see what I'm talking about here? Yep. Um everything they put out gets views nothing bombs yeah and then yeah, we get an end right. game you know um because let's be real we can talk about the entirety of marvel phase four but as soon as they drop the x-men everybody's going to be there opening weekend oh for sure because oh. nothing bombs they know oh. that they can release everything so what does the bean counters do well since we don't really care whether or not we succeed because succeeding is a foregone conclusion throw in all this stuff um and there's there's really no risk except because even when people are calling things flops they're not they're not super flops it's it's not like opening weekend was twenty dollars you know so even things that people are calling flops it's like well i mean yes and no yeah we've expanded the definition of flop to something that didn't make three quarter million do- or three quarter billion on opening weekend forget the summer month <laughs> if it didn't <laughs> open at almost a billion oh no it's a flop i can't buy my own island you know but and- yeah it's i mean i, I don't i don't want to I don't want Disney's ego stroked or Kevin Feige's ego stroked, but they could probably say the X-Men live action movie is coming out next week and you will get no trailer and that thing will sell out like hotcakes. Especially after X-Men 97. Yeah. Because X-Men 97 was that that, um, slot machine win that's been going against superhero fatigue. 
And what we're looking at with the Acolyte is another pull on that one arm bandit in Star Wars fatigue. Because we know they can do another Andor. Yeah, which is why, which is why I say there's no such thing as superhero fatigue, rom-com fatigue, Star Wars fatigue. Is that um, are you? Uh, it, it's it just doesn't exist. The issue is you don't like what you're seeing. Yeah. If every movie was a hit, if every if every track was a hit, you'd be playing it over and over. It, you were oh, I have music fatigue. No, you don't. <laughs> is it, is the music you don't like the music they've been putting out but you don't like if if every movie like that, that marvel music put fatigue. out was objectively at least a seven we wouldn't be having this issue like objectively like even the harshest critics were like it's a seven out of ten if they were dropping those there would no one would be talking about fatigue they'd be like where's the next one so it, yeah i that especially with that you know that gambling the gambling analogy yeah the because for me like i said with uh someone in the comments i can't remember who it was i wish i could remember their name but they were talking about how they uh got rid of disney plus because they just haven't really get been getting anything but they were referring to live action only and i was like well if you have live if you have live action you know and that's it you do have andor but andor i will say even though it's good it is slow i will agree with that criticism of it but even though it's slow it is good then you have mandalorian what i would say is if not if not right beside it just under it and for me action wise i would put it over it but after after andor and mando star wars quality is a roller coaster like Episode one, two, and three are bad. Four, five, and six are good. Seven and eight are okay. You know, see, or, from, and, from, and, and I, that's I, kind I, of where we are. And with that, it's not that Star Wars sucks. It's that Star Wars is inconsistent as all get out. Um, quite honestly, I see Star Wars as taste driven at this point. Okay. Um, because you got the shows that are universally good like especially mando seasons one and two right but people dropped out of mando on season three um for reasons i don't want to talk about bad actors or um people who argue in bad faith yeah. but some folks dropped out of mando season three but see mando seasons one and two universally good practically no notes you know because that had a little sum for everybody <laughs> um ahsoka was for the ladies um the bad batch were for the teenagers um they they choose their audience and they cater to that audience in the same way that episodes one two and three okay the prequels were not for me they were for my little cousins and my kid okay um were now, they this good? is pod were they racing bad? huh <laughs> now this is pod racing exactly you know even though i still say if you guys over at disney and lucasfilm did a mock 30 for 30 about saboba after the loss i'd watch it a mock 30 for 30 yeah you know how they do their like 30 for 30 documentaries about sports oh well, okay. you know do one about Saboba after the loss and how he had to climb back to prominence in the pod <laughs> racing game. That that'd be awesome, you know. It'd be, it, but that's a that's a whole other side thing. Like yeah. Star Wars, you're you're missing opportunities, man. You know. <laughs> so I mean that that's the big thing, and I think a lot of complaints that come out is folks complain very loudly about something that they watched that was meant for someone else. Okay. You know. Um, again, y'all know I watch stuff from all over. Like, uh, one of my favorite cartoons that wasn't Avatar The Last Airbender, <laughs> um, <laughs> over the past few years was The Owl House. Okay. Um, fact, I have never been a 14-year-old girl, but I thought it was a great cartoon. And 
I recognized in a lot of areas where the show wasn't written for me. But I loved it for what it was. And um, just because I've never been a uh, 13-year-old girl doesn't mean I didn't go through some of those same things because I happen to be homo sapien sapien. <laughs> Bet y'all thought I was going somewhere else. <laughs> um, and, you know, when I watch uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, hell, when I read Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, you know, I know that's not written for 47 year old men. But I'm feeling it. You know what I mean? I mean, I it's a family. So, I mean, 47 year old men have families. Yeah, but and the dad ain't the main character. And that's nah, my nah. point. Um, and I think a lot of a lot of the stuff that comes down is a lot of folks don't quite understand that these companies don't know who they are. They, they really don't. These companies, uh, the people that are paying for these and approving these scripts, they are not middle class Americans. They are upper class Americans. All right. Um, like the ones that are on the lowest rungs think they're middle class and think that everybody has a maid you feel me <laughs> well shoot you know? the money that they're making living in la they might actually just be like lower middle class <laughs> i'm talking the people paying for it not the writers <laughs> oh okay the people paying for it the, the people yeah. paying for it are probably one percent yeah um well they're definitely in the top five and that's kind of the point that i'm making so what we're looking at is stuff that's being sold to the majority of Americans by people who have no idea what their customer base are really into except for what the numbers show. And a lot of outrage comes out because this isn't for me. And it's like, it was never for you. It was for your money. <laughs> and, um, and since you hate watched it, we the bean still... counters told us that it was getting views, but we didn't know that the views was because all of you wanted to hate on it on YouTube. So, <laughs> hey, um, you know, one of the first lines of Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean was, you know, you're Captain Jack Sparrow. You are this and this, this. You must be the most pathetic pirate I've ever heard of. Ah, but you have heard of me. You know, true, this true, the worst true. Star Wars show I've ever seen. Oh, so you watched it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Oh, man. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to throw it to jay final thoughts but let's 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 get hopeful we, you know we did have a good episode a, a pretty good episode i say a better episode of the show final thoughts what uh, maybe some predictions and uh where can they find you? okay so i think that they have a really strong opportunity here to start to bring this show together i mean we should have like one more episode of act two and then we'll have two episodes of act three effectively. And okay. now that we know who the enemy is, there shouldn't be a lot of, um, it doesn't feel to me like there should be a lot of, uh, wasted space or wasted time or any filler. So, uh, we are, we are headed toward the end game. We're also, we're all, we're almost penultimate in our, in our movement towards the end game. And I think that that should, I think that that should clarify a lot of things that the show has been like, for example, you brought up earlier, which is a hundred percent true. How many times have OSHA and may changed their minds about something in the course of like, you know, an hour's worth of screen time like they've changed their mind like probably three or four times on really relevant topics that they were headed in one direction and then did like a really like left turn right into a completely different direction and so now i don't feel like we should have any more of that going on we should be there should be clarity around where this is going and how this is going and how we're going to finish this series so that's good and i think that having a really well-defined sith um is really good too and we can only build on like the the background that he has so i think all of those things are good and it makes me think that the show has the ability to do what um ahsoka i think did not do uh, ahsoka peaked mid mid season 
or mid series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, or yeah, both same 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 difference. But in this in this particular season of the Acolyte, I feel like it can peak in the last three episodes, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that being the case. Um, but you can find me. I just released a um, Deadpool explained video. Again, when I explain videos, it's not like new rock stars where it's like every single possible Easter egg. That's not the way I explain things. The way I explain things is from a um, storyteller's point of view. And so I'm looking at things like, why did they choose that to be the first act? What happens of significance in the second act? What are the character arcs going throughout this? Um, so I just explained Deadpool, and that's over at How Stories Work with Jay Shear. So you can catch me over there. You can also catch me on uh, Orange Grove 55. That's where the Story Geeks podcast is currently being housed. And we'll talk about whatever. The last thing we talked about was Deadpool, um, the original Deadpool. We're going to talk about Deadpool 2 pretty soon, and then we're also going to talk about Deadpool and Wolverine after that comes out. Um, so yeah, you can find me uh, How Stories Work with Jay Shear, and then Orange Grove 55. All right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. And Solar Gray, final thoughts, maybe a prediction or two. Where so, give give me something positive. Give me give me something to excite. And uh, where can they find you? Well, that's hard following up Jay because you know you're. I, I I have a little bit of a headache right now, and that's because there's a whole human being in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. You know. Now that they've finished up. Um, act two in story structure. I'm actually really looking forward to where they're going with act three. Um, what are they gonna do with um, yeah, what are they gonna do with um, with Osha and May? You know, um, answer a few questions now that we know that the Sith the Sith survived, which was cool. I was hoping he wouldn't be taken out by bugs. Because that felt way too much like a climactic position in that scene. Mm. Like, okay, um, we just got his identity and, um, oh, now you're killing him off. And now May is the big bad guy. Um, I'm glad they didn't go that route. Which lets me know that there is hope in the writers of this show. In the writers and even in the direction in a certain way. Um, I'm hoping... I'm really hoping, and I'm seeing that they might actually, that the whoever's on the production team, the writers, the directors, I hope they slow down and stop rushing through their stop rushing through the story in this final act, you know. Um, and I think they might. I, I think they might actually start slowing down, not giving a lot of a lot more exposition. I think they finally finished up the exposition except for Manny and they're on to giving a story and I'm really looking forward to that because the story isn't terrible so far as I said um, it's a kung fu movie um, and, and kung fu movies are pretty straightforward with the plot you know I mean we're past the you killed my teacher um, part of the kung fu movie and now we've actually opened up um, the gate to a character story. And okay. I'm really starting to see that because um, we've had the flashback. Now we've had the obligatory show-stopping fight scene. Um, and I say the showstopper because, you know, it is very much like a musical. We had the showstopper. Now we can get to the story. Um, and I mean the real story, not just of why May is doing what she's doing, but who they are as a character and where is their journey taking them, you know? So I'm really looking forward to that, actually. I really am. Um, as you know, um, I am a big trekker and I'm always willing to give stuff you know, a few episodes, sometimes even as, as much as a season, to find its footing. And now we're at that point where we've met the characters, we know the stories, we know the rhymes. Now can we get to the job? And I think that that is where we're at now, and I think the writers know that. And the thing that made me think that the writers know that is the fact 
that in this episode they finally said oh yeah by the way they're jedi here's a lightsaber fight so they know what the audience expects and i think they've gotten the subverting expectations part of their job out of their system to hope yeah you don't always have to subvert expectations subverting <laughs> expectations doesn't make you smart everybody it doesn't make the turn. story clever it doesn't <laughs> But you know, uh, sorry, go ahead. My no, mind. everybody wants their turn. You know, um, again, um, we we've all worked in and around the industry, and once a trend comes up, that's all anybody talks about. So there's a lot of pressure to do the same thing that somebody else did. You know, ask Chris Nolan. Everybody's trying to be like him after Batman, right? Oh boy. So, I mean, hey, it 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 is a thing. So, fact of the matter is we're now in the part of the story where we've shaken off everything okay we've stretched our muscles we've knocked the rust off now we could get three episodes of a good story and that's what i'm looking forward to hmm. you know i i really do i mean no it's not as good as mandalorian season one but in all fairness it had a baby so it, it, it kind of cheated <laughs> you know, you put actual children in something, it's an automatic, like, hey, it's got a kid in it. Cool. That's why they did it for all those Godzilla movies. But <laughs> if you guys want to know more, you guys can find me at twitch.tv slash BID underscore P. Um, at the Back in the Deck Twitch channel, you can also look me up on YouTube under Solar Gray. And we are live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays every day that I'm not at a day job. <laughs> Cool, cool. All right. Um, for me, it's the instead of well, I'll I'll say this. You you uh, referenced how this is a kung fu movie, and a lot of it, at least from the trailer, gave us that idea. We were gonna get a mystery and a kung fu movie. I'll say this to writers in general of that want to do something that, like you said, is straightforward as a kung fu movie. You can be straightforward and still be cool. Like you don't have to be, you know, complex and like overly confusing and convoluted to be cool. You can be straightforward and still have all the emotional weight and everything. Look, all right, bring, bring it in, bring it very close, Star Wars writers. If you want to do a Kung Fu movie, all you have to do is look at all Kung Fu movies. All right, we start out, you killed my master. He goes, to face, he goes to face the person that killed his master. He gets humiliated. Or she gets humiliated. Beat down. It's horrible. But someone steps in, saves that person. That person that steps in ends up training that person. Finishing the training that the killed master wasn't able to finish. They then meet the person once again. And they are triumphant with some kind of new form or new style or new technique that the other master thought they did not know. So there you go. That's the whole thing. It, it, now, it's straightforward, but there's a whole bunch of trial and error and trial and tribulation emotionally with that. Th there you hey, go. man, why are you pitching the Karate Kid? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm pitching the Karate Kid. I'm pitching any number of Shaw Brothers films. It's like, it's like you know, go take your pick. I mean, but it, guys, it's, 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 it's hard, but it's not hard. Like, I'm pretty sure the hard part comes in when you send the script upstairs and they're like, kind of like uh, Solar said, yeah, but we want Pepsi to pay for something. So it, I guess that's the hard part. But um, in, my, in my estimation, we had the big fight scene. For these last three episodes, make them intense. And I think that will be good. If you make them intense, intense for Osha, intense for May. And I think we're good. But the ball's in your court. Y'all can do this, but you gotta bring it home. Cause it's been iffy up to this point. It's been rocky. So y'all got y'all got three episodes. Bring it home. But with that same if thing, only it had been rocky. That would have been a cool <laughs> <little> love story. <laughs> yeah, look, man, all you had to do is run up. A mountain in the snow and then like solve the cold war and then that's it <laughs> the dude was like lifting logs man come on like i mean the training the training montage you, 
Star Wars can use a training montage. There you go. Now, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, N-E-R-D, S-O-U-L, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, podcast, all that jazz. And until the next time that you are faced with a Sith that comes out of nowhere and seems to have way more skills than the rest of your Kung Fu brethren, then that means that you need to get back in the gym. Peace. <laughs>